Hello, everyone. Uh, today we are going to be talking about wayfinding in this session called University 101. So we will be talking about how to navigate campus and how to navigate the different types of websites that a U of G student will need to use. Before we get started, I just want to introduce myself. My name is Anna. I use she and her pronouns. Uh, I'm currently on the orientation team this year, and I have developed these university series for you. Um, I am going into my final year of a neuroscience and psychology major, and I am very excited to share all the wayfinding information for you. So what is the University 100 series? So this is a three session series that we've developed uh, for new students to get used to campus and feel ready to be a university student. There are three sessions, University 101, 102, and 103. So in this session, as I said, we're going to be covering wayfinding. In 102, you'll be learning about how to get involved on campus, whether that's through volunteering or joining clubs. Uh, and we'll also be sharing some resources that aren't related to academics. And in University 103, we're going to be sharing some student tips and tricks uh, in terms of academics and wellness, as well as the academics uh, and wellness resources available for you on campus. So let's get started with the wayfinding topics. Uh, and we're first going to cover how to actually get around campus um, so that you know where you're going when you do get here. So many of you might have already downloaded the I am a Griffin app or the IAAG app for short um, for a week. If you haven't downloaded the app already, I would suggest you do it now. Um, it's a great app to have, uh, especially for O-Week, because you'll be able to find all the O-Week events on your phone when you're on the go around campus. Um, it's also a great way to get to know other students. So another helpful feature on the I am a Griffin app is the campus map. Uh, this can help you learn how to get around campus and find where events are this week and where your classes are starting Thursday. So if you click on favorites when you're on the I am a Griffin app, you can add campus map and it'll be like a little circle and you can click on it easily from the home screen. So this is how you find the campus map on the I am a Griffin app. On Thursday, you will ha uh, all have your first day of classes and you might be wondering how you will find where your classes are. Using the campus map on the I am a Griffin app is just one way to find your classes. So if you go to favorites, uh, like I said, and click uh, add campus map, you will see it on your home screen and you will be able to see a campus map that looks like this and you can search any building um, up in the search bar. But maybe maps don't work very well for you. I know there are many folks that can't really use maps. They don't understand them uh, and that's totally okay. Uh, there is another really great way to find the location of your classes, um, and that's by visiting classfind.com slash Guelph. So if you do go to classfind.com, it will show you how to get to any building or classroom on campus uh, from the Canon. So I don't know if any of you know already where the Canon is. Um, if you don't know where it is, that's okay. You will know where it is soon. It's in the middle of campus, um, and it gets painted every night. It's a common place to meet with your friends uh, and a common meeting place for those selling textbooks. So you'll probably see a lot of people gathering around the Canon uh, during the first few weeks of school. So this website is super helpful for navigating campus because it shows you step by step photos of how to get to any classroom on campus from the Canon. Many students say that ClassFind has helped them when they're not sure what staircase to use in a building uh, to be more efficient or to see what a space looks like without a crowd. So personally, I really um, found Class Find helpful in my first year because it's a brand new campus. Um, you know, you might have been here on a tour, you might know where some buildings are, but odds are you don't know where most things are. And some classes, you know, I had to go up like a few staircases and turn many corners to get there. So it's really, really helpful to check out your classes on classfind.com uh, ahead of time. All right, so this is what classfind.com looks like uh, on if you're using it on your computer. It also works on your phone. It'll look a little bit different than this. Um, but basically, in the quick search section, you can put in 
the room number. Uh, just make sure you have like the building abbreviation and the number. And if you press the visit button, it'll show you the route uh, step by step of how to get there with photos from the Canon. Classfind.com, though, is not just for finding where classes are. As you can see, there's many different buttons you can press. Um, there's also a schedules button, which will have important schedules that you might need as a student, like exam schedules or the undergraduate academic calendar, the athletic schedule. So if you go on the schedules page, you can actually find out when the football game is during orientation week. So it's a really helpful website um, overall, not just for finding where your classes are. Let's take a quick look at how to get to Rosansky Hall, room 104. This is a room that a lot of large first year classes uh, will be in, so you probably will have a class in that room. So when you put Rosansky 104, this, these are the photos that come up. You can see that there's arrows and photos of each step on how to get to Rosansky 104. And it's really helpful because it even has it has photos, but it also has descriptions. This website will actually even show you what uh, the door to the classroom looks like so that you don't need to guess. And this is really helpful, especially when you're, you know, going into a building for the first time and you don't know what any of the doors or classes look like. So this is a really great way to learn where your classes are. Um, it's much easier to see the photos and the route than to look at a map for some folks. and. Don't worry if you don't have a chance to look at your exact uh, class routes before Thursday or Friday. There will be orientation volunteers and upper year students and staff around campus. So if you look lost, someone will help. Um, there will also be a wayfinding tent in Branyan Plaza, which is next to the Canon. Um, it's basically also in the middle of campus and it's in front of the UC. Um, there will be a group of volunteers uh, at this tent that are there specifically to provide you with directions and help you find where you are going. All right, so now let's talk about how you will navigate U of G websites. So even though most courses are in person, there are still multiple websites that you'll be using as a student uh, on a daily basis for some and on a less frequent basis for others, but they're all very important to know. So first let's talk about single sign-on. This isn't actually a website per se, but it is an important thing to know about. After you accepted your offer, you would have gotten a single sign-on or SSO for short uh, login. So this is your username and password and they're extremely important because they give you access to all the important websites and apps you will use as a U of G student. So this includes things like GriffMail, CourseLink, WebAdvisor, GriffLife, the library website, Experience Guelph, and many more. So most of these popular websites can be found on the top bar of the U of G website's uh, homepage, but let's go back to what single sign-on is. This is a very helpful tool that keeps you signed in across all of these different websites that I've listed um, so that you don't have to sign in every single time you visit uh, one of these websites as long as your browser is still opened, uh, open and signed in. While we are talking about single sign-on, I just want to remind you to not share um, your password with anyone as it is linked back to very important personal and banking information. So this is what the single sign-on page looks like. Uh, I'm sure some of you have seen it already, or hopefully most of you, if you've chosen your courses or signed into your email account, um, but essentially on every website that you go to or almost every website, uh, that you will go to that is uh, for the University of Guelph, this same page will pop up and you will enter your username and password. Now let's talk about CourseLink. This might not be a website that any of you are familiar with as classes haven't started yet, but um, you might have seen something similar to it if you've used D2L or Google Classroom or something else similar uh, during high school. So this is your course hub, and you will probably be here every day, multiple times a day. Um, this is where you will access your course content, complete quizzes, view your grades, and submit your assignments. Um, and it is also where you will check the course outline or syllabus uh, on the first day of classes. Um, so when they do post the course outline, make sure you 
take a look and get familiar with it so that you know what things are going on in your course. Uh, things like how many quizzes you're going to have or what textbook you might need, things like that. So this is what the course link homepage looks like, and this is where you will see all your courses. So there's just one here on the photo, but you will have more courses on this homepage. Um, and to click on, you, if you click on one of the boxes, then you will see all the information for each specific course. Um, you will find headings on the individual course pages like content, Dropbox, quizzes, grades, and others. So content, as the name suggests, is where you will uh, typically find the course content. This could be things like lecture slides, course notes, assigned readings, or any other documents that your professor wants you to have for reference. Another one that you will see is Dropbox, and this is the most common place for you to submit labs, essays, papers, uh, and things of that nature. Right. Quizzes is pretty self-explanatory. Here, professors can post practice quizzes, weekly tests, midterms, and even final exams if they're taking place online. Um, the questions on a course link test can be multiple choice, short answer, long answer, and there's even been matching games that I've seen. So there's a lot of different um, variety of answers, you variety of questions, sorry, that you might have. Um, another thing you might see on course link is a discussions tab. So this is where professors can create different forums for students to ask questions. Some professors also like to use the discussion board for assignments where you post your ideas and discuss them with your classmates. Finally, grades, as the name suggests, is where you'll see your, uh, your grades for assignments, quizzes, tests, and midterms. On course link, the first thing that most students do is find the course outline or syllabus when starting a new class. So make sure you go to each of your course pages and find that under the content tab. Um, so this is where you'll find all your assignments, when they're due, how much they're worth, and things like that. So personally, I like how course link is outlined um, and it's really helpful when professors post the PowerPoint slides um, in advance, most of them do, uh, because I like to download them and use them during the lecture and use my tablet to like write on the slides. So it's really helpful that a lot of professors will use course link and give you content in advance so that you can prepare ahead of time. So now that we've talked about the academic side of things, let's talk about something a little more fun, um, which is Griff Life. So this is another U of G website and it is your hub for events on campus. So this is where you'll find all the O-Week events, things running through the year and active clubs that you can join um, on campus. There are over 200 clubs on campus that you can join. So let's look at how you will be able to find them. So if you um, go on the Griff Life homepage, uh, in the search bar at the top, you can search for events or organizations. Um, and you can also see a full list of events and organizations uh, by switching tabs at the top. If you are looking to get involved in a club or organization, meet some new people, or you need a study break, Griff Life is the place to go. This is what the events page looks like. This is where you'll be able to see all the O-Week events, um, but also throughout the year, clubs will post the events that they're running, and you can always go to Griff Life and see what's going on around campus. Maybe there's some fun trivia um, night going on at Brass Taps, or, Maybe there is some kind of paint night that your favorite club is running. Um, so in terms of O-Week events, Pep Rally is a super fun event where all first year students and orientation volunteers come together to do their boogies. And it's a great way to celebrate before the first day of classes. You will also get to see Griff and all the other mascots that we have on campus. So you can see the Pep Rally event on the bottom right corner of the screen right now, and you can see that it's happening at 7 p.m. on Wednesday, September 7th. So if you want to know when these larger events that are kind of O-Week staples are running, I would also suggest checking Griff Life, but it's also linked to the I Am A Griffin app. 
All right, so now let's talk about Griff Mail. This is your University of Guelph email account. We use Outlook, so if you've already used it in high school, this should be pretty familiar to you. Um, it's extremely important to check your Griff Mail often, as this is where you get official campus emails about what's going on on campus, if there's any important updates. And this is also how your professors will likely communicate with you if, they're, if it's not through course link. The university won't use your personal account, so your Gmails, Hotmails, all those things to email you. They will use the email account that they've given you. Um, so any updates regarding tuition, enrollment, deadlines, or emails from professors and course coordinators will be sent to this email address. It's a good habit to get um, used to using your Griff mail and start emailing uh, professors and others through there. Um, and filling out any university related information with it as your contact email. Um, as anything that is sent to staff and faculty at the University of Guelph from your personal uh, account will be ignored or you will be told to re-email them using your Griff mail. So you also have access to the entire Microsoft suite, which includes OneDrive, Word, PowerPoint, and Excel. This is to make it easier to share documents with your group uh, members during group assignments. And on Outlook, you'll also see there's a calendar feature, which is really useful for scheduling your time. I've personally used it a lot, especially for um, when I've been working at the O team this summer. Uh, so the calendar on your email automatically connects to your team's account, which makes it great for scheduling meetings with your professors, teaching assistants, academic advisors, student clubs, or even your, um, your groups for group projects. A good tip is to put your classes and any deadlines into your calendar so that you can easily see when you have a class or when things are due. Because emails are so important to your life as a student, you need to make sure you are uh, sending good emails. So sometimes you will need to email your professors, um, maybe to tell them that you are going to be um, going away and you won't make it to a lab or that you would like an extension on assignment, or even if you just wanna know when their office hours are, or if you want to get some extra time on something. So we have some do's and don'ts about emailing professors. One thing that you should do is to be respectful and polite to your professors. And a don't for emailing professors is to uh, is don't rush them. They are very busy and have hundreds or even thousands of other students each semester. So please be patient with them. They will get to your emails. Uh, I haven't had any experience with professors not getting back to me for a super long time, so it shouldn't be too much of an issue, but don't expect them to answer in two minutes. <laughs> um, another thing you should do is to let them know what class that you're in because they do have all these different students and they might be um, the professor for a few different types of courses. So for example, if you're in their chemistry 1040 uh, class, make sure you add that maybe even in your subject uh, line of your email so that they can easily know uh, what it is that you are asking about. All right. So now that we've talked about emails, let's talk a little bit about WebAdvisor. I'm sure you have all had some experience with it so far because this is where you have done your course selection and maybe um, have organized some financial things. Uh, so WebAdvisor is your university financial and logistics hub. All the boring nitty gritty things that you don't need to use on a daily basis, but you do need to be aware of. WebAdvisor also has some links to uh, very important web pages. Uh, it's where you can find the student planning tool, your academic profile, your financial information, and more. So let's check out the student planning tool. You should all recognize this um, part of WebAdvisor because this is where you registered for your classes back in the summer. And you will be using this uh, part of WebAdvisor again in a few months to select your courses for winter 2023 semester. So choosing your courses can be fun, but sometimes you might not enjoy a course you have enrolled in. If that happens and you want to drop a course at any point during the semester before the drop deadline, you will also do that through WebAdvisor. 
You can also go on the site to plan the courses out that you want to take in the next few years of your degree. It will provide you with the course requirements of your major uh, and or minor and can even show you what courses you would need if you were to switch programs. So it's a really helpful tool to make sure that you're on the right track. When picking courses or browsing what U of G um, has to offer, you can check out the course catalog. This lists all the courses available at the university sorted by subject. When you are searching for electives or courses to take, I would recommend looking under multiple subjects. You never know what you will find interesting. Another very important feature of WebAdvisor is your financial profile. If you click on student finance, it will show you a summary of your financial account and you can see if you have outstanding payments. There are also tons of helpful links on this page if you want more information about anything finance related. So WebAdvisor and the sections uh, and tools within it allow you to take care of a lot of the business of being enrolled here at the University of Guelph. So getting into classes, paying for school, uh, all those sorts of things. And you can do 95% of all the things you need to do um, related to your enrollment and finances through WebAdvisor. However, there are a few things that you can't currently do, like getting waived into a course that you are restricted from adding because it's full or it's restricted to students in a certain program uh, or a few other things. For those things that you can't do through WebAdvisor, the university has the link. Um, this is a brand new uh, place that is opened on campus and we're going to show you a quick video about the link right now. Hey Griffins, have you heard about the changes that will make your life easier? As you all know, a major part of school is taking care of things outside of the classroom, like getting into all the classes you need, getting school paid for, and eventually applying to graduate. So we've taken some big steps to make all of that easier for you. First, we recently rolled out our enhanced web advisor platform, where you can find info and do most things related to your classes, your personal and academic records, and your finances. And now for the things you can't do on WebAdvisor, for when you need a little help navigating things, or for when you just need to talk to a real person, the University of Guelph is thrilled to introduce the Lincoln Alexander Student Service Center. The link is your new one-stop shop where each staff member is trained to help with whatever you need. Visit the link on the third floor of the UC or at uofguelph.ca slash the link, where you'll find everything you need, including info on the many ways link staff are available to support you. WebAdvisor and the link, making it easier for you to navigate your university experience. As you just saw, the link is our newly created office that can help you when you can't do something on WebAdvisor, when you need a bit of help figuring something out, or if you just want to talk to a real person, whether that be through live chat, virtual meeting, phone, email, or in person. The staff at the link are trained to help you with all of your enrollment, financial, and records needs, and they can be found on the third floor of the University Center and online at uoguelph.ca slash the link. Before we wrap up, I want to quickly go over how you can get the most out of your O week. So if you've attended Ready, Set, Griffin earlier, this might sound familiar, but with lots of new things happening, uh, a quick reminder is helpful. So O week will go uh, all the way until Sunday, September 11th. Although your classes will start this Thursday, we still have tons of fun activities planned for you. We have talked about Griff Life before and how this is where you can find all the events that we'll be running this week. So take some time to go through Griff Life and look at some of the clubs that might interest you because there are many clubs that are, have organized events uh, for you to attend during a week. To make the best use of this website, try searching for both clubs and events. All events also have descriptions, so make sure you read them so that you know what to expect. There's also lots of tags that you can use, such as new student, activism, cultural clubs, outdoors, and so many more. Um, if you go to the categories section when you look through the events, this is where you can look at the different tags. So a week is the perfect time to get connected with other new students, upper year students, faculty, and staff. Making new friends can be a little scary, but remember that everyone is in the same boat and you are not alone. A super easy way to make new friends is to introduce yourself and invite them to join you at an event that you are both interested in. Or maybe you can suggest something that you're interested in that they haven't heard about and maybe they'll be interested in it too. So go to events. Student organizations have put hours of work planning these for you and are so excited to meet the new members of the U of G community. 
Take the week to explore the university and get comfortable, whether that be on campus, online, or both. So one of the uh, my favorite things during uh, my O week was pep rally and the block party, which uh, could have already happened for you, um, depending on when you're watching this recording. They were both really great ways to get to know people. The block party let me get to know people outside of my residence. And for the pep rally, I got more familiar with the people that were in my residence. So that was really fun. All right, so that brings us to the end of University 101. Remember to join us for University 102 um, or watch the video where we will be talking about getting involved on campus and important resources for students that help make our campus more inclusive. Thank you everyone for watching University 101. I hope that you feel a little bit more comfortable about navigating campus and the different University of Guelph websites.